And everything she wants and everything you see is out of reach, not good enough. I don't know what the hell. Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, without further ado, I am going to plunge right in because I have a lot of ground to cover today and time is of the essence. Mr. Red Jeans says, Dear Lady C, delighted with all your programs. Thank you very much, Mr. Red Jeans. I can see you are American by your spelling of the word programs. What are your thoughts given the passing of the great Dan Feinstein on Meghan trying to lobby to serve out the remainder of her term. Given all perspectives have declared they are running, it would be a disaster. Have you heard any whispers? But I'm sure the manipulating power-hungry Markle, who couldn't pass the State Department exam, has gone all action stations despite the governor refusing her calls. <laughs> and I'm going to read out what Blue Two says. What do you make of the Daily Mail splashing the news that Meghan was a contender for Dan Feinstein's Senate seat, only for Governor Gavin Newsom to announce that he's chosen LaFonza Butler, Meghan... <laughs> Megan, what can I tell you? She's at it again. Well, I did warn you. I did say I had heard from people in the Democratic Party what was going on. And sure enough, I said Gavin Newsom had other fish to fry and that Megan didn't stand a chance. Oh, Gordon, please, I got a target on my back ever since that dote of a oh sorry my beloved husband confessed to killing 25 taliban i've got a target on my back please gordon i need to be the governor of california at least the senator and maybe the president of the united states i mean just so that i get used to not having too much pressure. Can you buy me a $40 million house to start with, please, Gordon? Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the whole thing is ludicrous. Somebody said to me today <laughs> that Megan wasn't black enough. Megan, reverse the nose. Stop straightening the hair. Go in the sun and get a good tan. You're not black enough. Well, <laughs> Lafonza Butler, as we now all know, lives in Maryland. But that hasn't stopped Gavin Newsom appointing her. She was an advisor to Kamala Harris's disastrous presidential campaign. And Newsom told NBC host Joy Reid back in March that he planned to fill the seat with a black woman should it become open. Well, Megan isn't black. Megan went to some pains in Netflix to point out that nobody ever called her black until the ghastly and British press did. Wicked racists. Well, within minutes, of Diane Feinstein's death, which I was told about because a great, great friend of mine is a great, great friend of hers. So I knew pretty soon after this friend of mine knew, uh, but within 90 minutes of the news being made public, 
on Friday, according to the Mail, Megan's latest cheerleader. Gosh, we just love you, Megsy baby. According to the Mail on Sunday, the phones all lit up with speculation that the Duchess of Sussex could slow her hat in the ring to serve out the remaining 13 months of Feinstein's term. Well, they quoted a supposed major Democratic donor who is close to Governor Newsom that Meghan is definitely a long shot but in the craziness that is U.S. politics these days, it's not an impossibility. Crazier things have happened. Well, that is actually not a testament <laughs> of faith in Meghan. Uh, and really, that was a very diplomatic way of saying not a hope in hell. Uh, because, of course, all the candidates had already put their hat in the ring. There's Adam Schiff, there's Katie Porter, and there is, you know, that woman, LaFonza Butler, she is a very much an advocate for the rights of termination, let's put it that way, since this is YouTube, we're referring to Road ver Row versus Wade. And she has been quite a force in California politics for some time because she's a former Labour leader with SEIU 2015. But she's also a lesbian and black. Doesn't she tick all the boxes? Well, there was absolutely no way that Meghan was ever going to get it. Not with people like Katie Porter and Adam Schiff sniffing around. However, what is really interesting is that Newsom has appointed her, but she has and he has declined to say that she won't throw her hat in the ring and run because the sitting replacement senator has a tremendous advantage, I am informed, over anyone else. Well, maybe the person who told me Megan isn't black enough really does have inside knowledge on the workings of how these things happen. And also, Megsy Baby, you've got to leave out the man. You've climbed as high as you're going to climb. Gratis manhood. You now need to climb on the backs of women. <laughs> Fancy a trip on the Isle of Lesbos? Mm. But also, I'm told something really interesting. That Michelle Obama might throw her hat in the ring for the presidential nomination. And that Barack Obama is remaining a very stum about things. But it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Michelle Obama will save the day from Sleepy Joe, Kamala Harris, and LaFonza Butler, and all the rest of them. Well, she certainly would be a rather more credible to many people prospect as a president and also of course as some rather naughty wags have been saying this would then be 
Barack Obama's fourth term as president, and he would then have a fifth chance if she were re-elected. <laughs> I don't know much about American politics, but I can tell you something. The passions run, as all Americans know, run very high on both sides of the fence. So let us see, but Michelle Obama is, has been chilling on Steven Spielberg's yacht. Megan, I hope you're gonna condemn her for that carbon footprint. I hope you're going to be consistent. Please condemn her. I don't think you will, will you? But I'll tell you, my own reading on this whole thing is that Meghan never stood a hope in hell of ever getting either Dan Feinstein's seat, as I pointed out some months ago, even though she was eager to push herself forward. I think she is content as opposed to happy to settle for the fact that her name was mentioned at all. Because what's more important to Meghan than attention? Money and power. But if she can't get the power, she'll take the money and the attention. JD says, greetings, Lady C. Two questions, if you please. One, it seems one of the ideas next Netflix is pitching in its desperate bid to obtain some bang for its bucks with the Sussexes is a series with Meghan touring the White House and narrating about the strengths of notable first ladies throughout American history. Of course, the series will have a woke female empowerment agenda to show how women are actually morale power behind powerful men. Will any president dare to give Meghan Max access to the White House while her relationship is so frosty with the royal family? <laughs> you notice the Clooney's had something the other day and neither Meghan nor Harry was there. You notice Barack had a party and neither Meghan nor Harry was there. Do you think President Biden and Mrs. Biden are going to throw open the doors of the White House uh, to allow Meghan to do a series along the lines of what Jackie Kennedy did when she was first lady. While relations are as frosty with the royal family, and also, Megan isn't black enough. Evidently, as Lafonza Butler has uh, Butler's appointment has just shown, Megan, you need to stop drinking milkshakes and stop straightening your hair. That's what you need to do. You need to come out as a proper woman of color. Be natural. Give yourself a break. Run a chance of becoming President Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex of the United States of America, with her sidekick, sorry, first lady, sorry, first gentleman, Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. What a pretty sight that's going to be. Oh, and two. Patrick J. Adams has been posting behind the scenes photographs of Meghan and other actors on the set of Suits and gushing about how wonderful the experience of working with Meghan was on social media. Ostensibly as a way to promote Suits on Netflix, 
and he had permission from Megan to do so. But Megan did not like the photos he chose to post, and Patrick was slapped down and told in no uncertain terms to remove the photos from social media and gave a groveling apology. <sighs> I'm so sorry, he said. I so I broke ranks with the strikers. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Suits was made long before the st strike. So you're not breaking ranks, you know. Well, somebody who knows Megan very well and who actually purports to like Megan says, it's not very difficult to get on her bad side. All you need to do is anything that she feels is not in her interests. And she spins around like a rabid dog, is what they say. So, and I'm going to quote something. Everyone who uses social media does flashbacks to positive times in their lives and posting retro pics from behind the scenes is part of social media interactions. Added to the fact that Suits is trending on Netflix. Yeah, but Megan isn't the one that's making Suits trend. But anyway, we'll get there in a minute. It feels like a good thing to do for Patrick as he's getting new fans and followers who've only just discovered the show. It seems rather odd that he is using the SAG strikes as an excuse to delete the images as the images obviously are retro. So it not, it's not like he is working or crossing picket lines. Interestingly enough, when people started to say that they believed Megan was behind it. One of her team told Mail Online, this is absolutely untrue. Now, isn't it interesting? Because Megan and Harry have stated they have avowed to have no communication whatsoever with the Mail group at all, at all, at all. And in, that includes never confirming or denying anything. But they have denied this. Mm, 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 mm. It turns out that the male is as familiar with veracity as Megan is. Mm. Interesting bedfellows, don't you think? Finley Kim says, Dear Lady C, I have a practical question about titles. If Meghan Markle runs for office in the US, does she have to fully relinquish her title, never to be used again, whether or not she wins, or does it go into abeyance and then she can start using it again as she pleases? I shouldn't imagine things work that way. Also, would Prince Harry have to relinquish his ducal title to be first husband? And if so, is it only in abeyance or gone for good? My warmest wishes to all. Very interesting question, Finley Kim. Meghan doesn't actually possess a peerage. Megan's title is a courtesy title. Therefore, she can dip in and out as she pleases. She can't renounce her title because she doesn't own the title. She only has the use of it, gratis marriage. So, she can't renounce a title she actually technically doesn't own because she is the mere wife to be dead blunt about it. 
Harry is the one who would have to do that. And if he did, if he asked for his titles to be put into abeyance, or if he renounced them fully, if they're put in abeyance, they could be restored. If he renounces them in perpetuity, they are gone ad infinitum. As if there is no prospect of Harry being first lady, sorry, <laughs> first man, because I don't think we'll stretch to say he'd be first gentleman, because he hasn't behaved in a very gentlemanly way recently, has he? So first, oh no, yeah, let's say first husband. If he were the first husband, uh, would he have to relinquish his ducal title? I don't suppose he would have to, after all. There's no obligation insofar as I'm aware for the spouse of a president of the United States to be an American citizen. And if he became an American citizen, he would have to renounce his title and would thereafter be Mr. Henry Windsor. So hopefully that answers the question. Maudis says, I tell you all the woke me also and false accusations are making us real women look stupid and hyper aggressive banshees. You're absolutely right. Except the only people that we look stupid or hyper aggressive banshees are to stupid people. Everybody else knows what a real woman looks like, sounds like, and is. So they would like to believe that they have the upper hand and that they are the ones who can belittle us. And if we stand up for what we regard as our rights or being in the right, that we are being poo-pooed. But you know, women have had to put up with this throughout the whole history of time. It's nothing new. And rarely, I mean, I remember when I was younger and even now, some members of the sisterhood are one's biggest enemies, usually because of envy. But I don't think any of this is new. I think it's simply dressed up as something new when in fact, <coughs> sorry, it's a really old hat, just posing as something new. Sheila Wallen says, I found the attitude of Ofcom deeply offensive and condescending. I couldn't agree more. The public are perfectly able to change channels if they do not like content on their TV. Couldn't agree more. I do not want a nanny state telling me what is available suitable for me to watch. Couldn't agree more because as soon as they tell you what you can watch, they are actually censoring you. But anyway, let me finish. I am big enough and ugly enough to decide for myself. <laughs> Sheila Wallen. You're a gal after my own heart. I couldn't agree more. I really think a lot of this is absolute rubbish. I understand why there are very limited incursions that are sometimes necessary. You know, for instance, the watershed where Children sh shouldn't be able to look at certain programs. So I think the watershed in England is, at least it used to be nine o'clock. I don't know what it is now, but I think it's most likely still nine o'clock. And that's reasonable. 
After nine o'clock, I think the Wild West should reign supreme. I'm not in favour of governments telling citizens what they, the government, wants the citizen to view. Censorship I am not in favour of when it's up to a citizen to turn it off or not. That's, you know, free choice. Rejection is the ultimate, ultimate protest, really. Why do we need protection against finding something offensive on television and or, or in the newspapers? You know, until the 1960s, books were censored and everybody regarded it as a good thing that books ceased being censored. But now they want the televisual equivalent of book censorship. Is that not bizarre and wildly inconsistent? CBH9298 says, Pretty Patel just said, GB News is fabulous and greatly needed. Delighted to hear it. I understand Pretty Patel is also, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be mistaken, but I think Pretty Patel is up for some really rather juicy honour from the king. Hmm. More of which some other time. Julie Jacobs says, Sorry if Lauren Fox should apologise then also. These two toxic, despicable women who dismiss men's mental health issues should also do so. Absolutely appalling behaviour. Well, yes, one of them was Arva Santina Evans, who I have to tell you, it's really very interesting because it turns out that shagging is a word that Ava Santina Evans customarily and frequently has used over the years, not over a limited period, going back several years. All of a sudden, she finds it traumatic. But when it's, shall we say, the tool is in her hand, she takes no compunction. She has, she has no compunction and takes no mercy as she aims to annihilate. Hmm. Well, having said all of that, GB News is in a very invidious position because GB News is the only television channel in this country that is prepared to give anybody who has a legal and rational opinion a platform. If you've looked at GB News, you will see that they usually give pro, contra, and when they have a third party, neutral in their discussions. Nobody else does this. However, there have been calls for, for instance, from Caroline Noakes, that <laughs> bizarre conservative MP, to have GB News shut down because of this stupidity. So the chairman, Alan McCormick, has told staff that GB News is not a place that tolerates personally denigrating comments or insults, and we never have been. In an email which was leaked to the Sunday Times, McCormick 
really who's trying to save the station and he therefore has my full backing because you know when you are on the fire and you are in danger of being annihilated you better duck for cover if it's the expedient thing to do later on down the line you can stand proud once again but there's no virtue in keeping your head above the parapet to have it blown off. So, McCormick, however, has come out fighting against what he calls the falsehood that conflates free speech with a right to verbally abuse. In other words, he's basically saying free speech doesn't mean the right to be personally abusive and I suppose you could say that although I thought that Lawrence Fox was really being puerile and adolescent uh, I suppose if you wanted to stretch a point really to where it doesn't belong you could make a case for the fact that he actually was being personally abusive. I mean, why he's not entitled to his taste as to who he will and won't shag, to use the word that Ava Santina Evans has been using over the last several years when she tells men she wouldn't shag them. So why that was not a cause for outrage, but this is slight, but I get that really the powers that be need to deal with the situation and see off the challenge. And he's, they're basically saying that, well, modify your language and do not be personally abusive. According to Helen, Helena Morrissey, who sits on the board of GB News's owner, All Perspectives Limited, this week it went horribly wrong and the actions that were taken show what we're about. And it doesn't mean that we suddenly don't believe in free speech because that is absolutely not the case. <coughs> and somebody in the organization said, this channel is at a crossroads. There has been a battle going on internally between professional journalist presenters having to contend with people like Fox threatening to bring the whole thing crashing down. If BGB News is to become a respected news challenge, which it already is incidentally, then all the people on it need to be respectable. There's long been talk along the lines of we need to get rid of the cranks and get serious. I think that's actually slightly extreme. I'm not sure they need to get serious because they're already serious. And the viewing figures show that not only are they serious, but they've been taken seriously and to the hearts of the general public, as well as being taken very seriously by their competitors, hence why they want to shut them down now. And when they say we need to get rid of the cracks, oh, uh, no, Lawrence Fox, whatever his failings, is highly intelligent and quite courageous and his language needs to be modified uh, and he needs to not be adolescent. That puts him and GB News in a far stronger position to then call to order people like Ava Santina Evans when they belittle the dangers of termination of life by one's own hand that 
that termination, that danger is rampant amongst young men. So, but get rid of the cranks. I'm sorry, if Lawrence Fox is a crank, so is Ava Santina Evans. And not only is she a crank, but she is a very dangerous, belittling crank. And what about Caroline Noakes, for instance? She is, if she's not a crank, she is a dictator. And I'm going to read out before we move on to the next one or two of Ava Santina Evans's quotes. On the 29th of August, 2022, I'm covering a period. Replying to Martin, Mar Matthew Torbit, she said, there would presumably be some good libertarian jokes about how if you shag one, you'd have to shag them all. On the 23rd of June, 2020, she said, replying to Bread and Tea, I'm not gonna shag you, mate. So clearly, she had a far stronger, shall we say, skin then than she does now. On the 28th of February, 2023, replying to Peter Wellington and Politics Joe UK, she said, Lawrence isn't going to shag you, mate. So obviously, presumably, judging off that, she and Lawrence have been banding that word around with regard to each other for some seven months. Oh, how does this one work? Why the sudden outrage? And before I kill the point by belaboring it too much, I end with this one. On the 6th of May this year, she said, I live by a church that has been ringing bells since 9 a.m. Please, how do I make it stop? He's not going to shag you. Now, what on earth, Ava Santina Evans, do the ringing of church bells and how you can make it stop have to do with Oh, oh, I get it. Sorry, I do get it. Oh, you're complaining that you, the church bells were preventing uh, your chap from being on the job? Well, excuse me. <laughs> Why are you invading your privacy and the bounds of good taste? by t keeping us up to date as to your carnal practices on a Sunday morning after nine o'clock. I make those points for what they're worth. Catherine Rourke says, because you understand more about climate change than most people, I wanted to pass on the following comment from my friend Dinah. The world goes in cycles, in seasons. Knowing your history, geology, science, climate and ecology issues and why, study to show yourself approved. A well-respected climatologist who retired from Iowa State a few years ago says, we are close to an 89 year drought cycle 1936 was the last, which he says will make the 1930s look like child's play weather-wise. The cycle can be traced back to the year 500 AD. She included side-by-side -side maps from 2023 and 1936, 
The header over the maps read 1936, much hotter than 2023. Catherine Rock, do please post this. That would be very interesting. I will simply say that notwithstanding the fact that I certainly believe that we need to protect our environment and not abuse it the way we have been doing, the fact of the matter is that climate change is a natural phenomenon that appears to be in danger of being converted into a political football that will score goals against the public by irresponsible politicians who wish to use it for political gain to the detriment of their electorate. All these questions are monumental questions that should be addressed calmly, reasonably, and with proper input from a variety of sources, not only those that agree with someone, but those that disagree. As simple as that. You know, a thousand years ago, the priests used to use climate change and the weather and the unpredictability of the weather and the unpredictability of climate to keep the populace in line. You're a sinner. If you didn't have sinful thoughts, that volcano would not have erupted. In the Old Testament, volcanic after effects, such as the swarm of the locusts, are dismissed not as natural phenomena as a result of a volcanic eruption, but God's curses on the Hebrew people for being sinners. Hmm. I make that point for what it's worth. Caroline Jackson says, Hello, Lady C. I have a hypothetical question for you. What would happen if a British monarch were openly gay? How would that impact on the line of succession? That is, what would that monarch do in terms of producing a legitimate heir to the throne? Thank you. Very interesting question, Caroline Jackson. Well, as things stand, unless the law were changed, an openly gay monarch would have to enter into what is known as a mariage blanc with a willing female who became, well, presuming, of course, that the openly gay monarch is a man. If it's a man, he has to enter. Uh, well, actually, yeah, let's just see. It's easy. If it's a man, he has to enter into a valid marriage with a woman. And his natural body fluids have to co-mingle with hers. And she has to bear the child for it to be legitimate the way things stand legally in this country at the moment. If it's a woman and she's openly gay, she would have to marry a man with whom she would have to have a child Again, it would, could be done by the Aaron's baby way, you know. I mean, surgical dishes have many pra practical <laughs> uh, 
functions, let's put it that way. And she, well, with her, it would be simpler because she'd simply bear the child. Uh, she could not, insofar as I am aware, marry a woman and have that woman's child, nor could if the man were gay and married, if he married a man, the man can't bear the child. So as the law stands at the moment, they would have to have a marriage between a male who was capable of impregnating and a female who was capable of impregnation. Otherwise, the child could not be in the line of succession unless the law were changed. It's quite possible the law could be changed. But we haven't come to that pass yet. Maybe we will. And we end with a really rather sweet thing about Sophie Edinburgh. Sam Stewart says, Yesterday was unexpected. I saw Sophie Wessex in the chilled section at Tesco's. I swear it was her, and if it was, she is a handsome woman indeed. How do I know if she is in D side at the moment, Lady C? Court Circular will tell you, my dear. I think King Charles is at Balmoral at the moment. I also notice Meghan is making a political move now in the USA. Is there any truth to this? Thanks. She's been making the move and she's been thwarted. So we go full circle. We started out with Meghan being thwarted. We've ended up with Meghan being thwarted via Sophie Edinburgh in Tesco. And yes, she is what you call a very handsome woman indeed. She's actually a very good looking woman. Uh, she's not pretty pretty. She is what, well, as you put it, she's handsome, which used to be a splendid looking woman as opposed to a girl. Uh, and on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, may I ask you to please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what you would like us to speak about. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless. And if you have really enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and God speed.